Welcome back to the channel, team. How's it going? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in to another video and for supporting me with your views. It means a lot to me. I hope that you are happy today, wherever you are in the world. I hope you have a smile on your face. And if that's the case, you know what to do. Pass that on and make someone else feel just as good as you are. We're gonna be tackling something super simple, oil change. Now the oil change on any car is one of the most basic things that you can do to your vehicle to keep it running in the long term. The oil capacity for the 740i in the US, and it should be actually the same as in Europe, uh, because I don't think there's many changes, but it is 7.5 liters, which equates to 7.9 quarts of oil. Um, so if you buy just two of the big five quart jugs, you should be fine. Now, when it comes to oil, I am a firm believer that across the board, pretty much all oil, as long as it's designed to be used and meets the specifications that your owner's manual describes, it's going to be the same. The only thing that matters is the consistency at which you do the oil changes. So it's not so much about what type of oil you end up buying, it's much more so about how often you do the oil changes. And that's gonna be the same for any car out there. So if you like Castrol, good, stick to it. If you like Mobile One, fantastic. Um, if you like Royal Purple and you like paying, what, 10, 15 bucks a quart, go for it. Secondly, as far as oil filters, again, that is personal preference. Um, just be aware that some of the cheaper filters may or may not come with everything you need. For example, when you're doing an oil change on the 7 Series, you need a brand new O-ring for the oil filter housing, and you also need a new crush washer for the drain plug. Now, if those are not supplied with the oil filter that you buy, then you have two options. You can either just reuse the old ones, which I wouldn't recommend because you're gonna risk a leak, or you can find it your own and source it from a different part store. And that's gonna be just more legwork that you need to put in on more of your time. But hey, that's what you may get or may not get when you buy a cheaper oil filter. Um, I usually go with MAN, the MAN filters, M-A-A-N. They're actually a German supplier and they always come with the O-ring and they always come with the crush washer. Meili and Hanks are two of the ones that come to mind off the top of my head, uh, but there are many out there. So just do your research. Again, just make sure that it's a quality part. Um, and when we are talking about German cars, usually it is better and you're better off sticking to a German made part. So without further ado, let's get into it and let's check out the tools that you're gonna need for this job. Tools you're gonna need for this job are pretty simple and they basically apply to most oil changes on 99% of cars. You're gonna need a ratchet, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket for the oil drain plug, a 36 millimeter socket. This one you may not have, depending on if, you're, uh, if you've done this on a BMW or not before, but the 36 is for the top of the plastic oil filter housing. You're gonna need a little pick tool, or a screwdriver, like a flathead will work. Some gloves, because you want to keep your manicure nice and uh, tidy. A jack, your wheel chocks. Jack stand, a rack, because of course it's an oil job, it's gonna be a messy job. A funnel for your oil, unless you have the world's steadiest est -est hands in the world. Start by grabbing your 36 socket and your ratchet. Place some dirty rags or any extra rags that you have around the oil filter housing because when you remove it, you will be making a mess. Now it's time to get under the car. So go ahead and jack up your car and then place your jack stand underneath the subframe. Now it's time to work under the car. Locate the drain plug, which takes a 17 millimeter socket and have your oil catch ready. When the oil comes down to just a trickle, lower the jack as much as you can. Now, depending on how big your oil catch is, that may not be all the way to the ground.
while the rest of the oil is draining, inspect your cap for any signs of damage. It is a plastic part and sometimes it can be cracked. If you see that, then just replace it. Find your new gasket that should have come with your oil filter. Start by removing the old gasket or O-ring. Um, you can use something like this, a small pick tool or even a screwdriver will work. Install the new one by hand, but before installing it, lightly coat it with oil. Make sure that the O-ring is in its proper channel. You'll see it, it's at the very, very edge right here after all the threads. Now grab your brand new oil filter. And if you look inside of your cap, there is a place where this filter will click onto the cap and become one unit. Next, take a look at your drain plug and you will see if you look closely that there is a washer, what's called a crusher washer on it. Remove the one that's on there. Your oil filter should have come with a new one which we will be installing. These are not reusable. It's time to reinstall the oil drain plug, but before doing so, take a few extra seconds and wipe down the area thoroughly. Then of course, grab your 17 and you can tighten your drain plug. Pro tip, before adding oil to the engine, it's a very good idea to fill up your oil filter housing about halfway with oil. After filling it up with oil, you're gonna start the car and you're gonna run it for about 60 seconds, maybe two minutes. Uh, that'll allow the oil to disperse everywhere into the jackets of the engine and everywhere that it needs to go. After that time, you're gonna shut off the engine and you're gonna check the oil level through the dipstick one more time and adjust or add any more oil as needed. The correct oil level is gonna be anywhere between those two notches on your dipstick. This one is gonna be for a max amount, and when you're down here, it usually means that you're about a quart low, but anywhere in between those, you should be fine. So the last thing that you want to do is now reset the oil service interval change light, which I hope you're not going by that because I swear that thing is set up for every 10,000 miles or whatever BMW's ridiculous oil service interval is. Find the little button that you use to reset your trip odometer and you're going to press and hold that while you turn your key over to the first position. Now a quick heads up, my display is missing all kinds of pixels. It's actually kind of hard to read the bottom line of the display down here, which is what we need to read because at some point in that line, it'll say reset. Now there's no way that you can see this, but it actually says reset on the bottom um, half of the display here. Well, once you see that word reset pop up, you're gonna press and hold again until the word reset starts to blink. Oh, actually, my camera died right as I was about to do that, but when that reset light starts blinking, press the tripodometer one more time, just click it once and you'll see that all the lights reset. I just did it on mine so you can see that it went all the way up to five green squares. I think I had three green squares on there before. And that is how you reset the oil light or the service light indicator 
on a BMW E38. As always, if you found this video helpful, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who doesn't know how to do an oil change, but most of all, be good to each other, and I'll see you on the next video.